SAP had its developer conference, uh, lovingly referred to as TechEd. Danny, you want to kick this one off? Yeah, absolutely. So back again, SAP Tech Ed, uh, still virtual. We weren't able to be there, but hopefully very soon. And this year's event was, uh, you know, focused on a lot of things. It, it, it's a big conference. But for SAP, I thought this was an event that really was diving into uh, closing skills gaps and making it easier to do business with SAP. So the company had a series of new tools and integrations announced. It had um, a series of no code, low code and pro code uh, solutions for SAP App Giver and SAP Business Technology Platform. Um, it had composable enterprise solutions that it talked about across the ERP suite, SAP integration suite, SAP on a cloud, SAP IBM for supply chain, there's a few examples. Um, it announced some embedded AI capabilities for various functions designed to simplify processes in the across the organization. Uh, and then, of course, the company continues to use this event as a platform to talk about learning and educational courses to help students all the way up to professionals in the workplace to better understand SAP. Because, of course, if you're not familiar, and I'm betting many of you that watch our show are, SAP, um, it's an ecosystem. And understanding how to use it is a strong uh, proposition for creating value and uh, economic value and, of course, job opportunities for people. Um, you know, there was a lot of things that, that happened at this event, Pat, but I think when you have a broad event like this, what I always like to do is kind of say, what are a couple of the things that really drove my attention? And so a few months or a few weeks ago, when SAP had their most recent earnings, we talked a little bit about uh, SAP and Rise with SAP, which is their new program that's all about making it easier to do business and easier to move your SAP instances to the cloud. If you followed SAP for a while, that's what most of the criticism of the company has come around is whether or not the company is moving quickly enough to the cloud and our companies adopting the platform. We know that in order to move from SAP's prem to cloud solutions, it's, it, really the process is a full on lift and shift. So it's not as easy as some companies. And this has also kind of opened SAP up to some risk for companies to use this as a moment to maybe move on to other, other platforms. With Rise, they're building a whole set of solutions to make it easier for companies to move over to cloud. Now, this isn't what TechEd was all about, but some of the things that they, uh, they announced at TechEd, uh, specifically the business technology platform, uh, along with their acquisition of AppGiver, which are all about the company's next generation of no code and low code to make it easier for companies to be able to do business. And that was sort of an underpinning of my, my analysis of the event was that the announcements that the company made were heavily leaning towards saying, SAP wants to be easier to work with, whether that's through partnerships, whether that's through uh, simplification in low code and no code, um, whether well, that's through simplified billing and streamlined workflows, but they understand the importance and the fact that a lot of risk profile that's been created through being a little bit um, of a more challenging lift to the cloud uh, and also for developing applications. So this event to me was heavy on the business technology platform, heavy on app giver, app giver. I think it's giver, Pat, but I actually haven't heard it out loud or heard it a few different ways. So I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Um, but that the, the SAP Tech Ed event was really about streamlining processes, making the citizen developer be able to help build SAP's value within the enterprise and making it easier to do business with SAP for companies that have invested in the platform. Yeah, I think you nailed it. And listen, I've been super skeptical of uh, SAP uh, over the years. I think I'm, I might have been tainted a little bit by uh, using it back at AMD back in you know 2001 or or something like something like that. So not not the uh, not the fairest comparison, but I'm slowly warming up to what the company is doing, particularly around the cloud. You know, it's a company that uh, knew what it wasn't going to be great at, and, and that was to stand up its own IaaS, very similar to to a Salesforce. Uh, or a Slack or a Zoom and focused on its core uh, competency, which was, and, and I know it's more than an ERP company, but that's really where the rubber meets the road. Um, what I liked about these announcements, and, and Daniel, I think you nailed it, was hitting on that that simplicity. You know, SAP had 
has had a reputation for being uh, hard to, to work with. And that's primarily because it was an on-prem play, a software play back in the early 2000s. And, and I remember even being where I worked at AMD, uh, we always had to put a wrapper around everything uh, SAP to make it easier for, for end users and developers. But the company has has really transformed itself over the last 20 years. And I think particularly in the last year, as I become to warm, warm up to the company that are doing uh, things dramatically different, whether that's Rise to help uh, customers get into the cloud uh, in, in a more simple way, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, acquiring uh, SaaS uh, uh, companies uh, like, you know, Ariba that, you know, I know you use Daniel and I use uh, as a company because of uh, a lot of our clients are, are on that. And it's nice to get paid uh, through, uh, through, through that service. But uh, now for this, it's low code and no code. And quite frankly, <clears throat> if you have an ecosystem, if you're a company, you have to have low code and no code because of the uh, drought of, of programmers. And we've heard this, this is not just an SAP thing. This is, this is Microsoft. Uh, this is AWS with honey code. Uh, this is, um, you know, power platform. Uh, this is anybody with an ecosystem, even Salesforce. So, uh, I like what I'm seeing, uh, from SAP and, you know, Daniel, I, uh, you know, I, I'm warming up to the company um as 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 we as we move forward here so you know, and if very, i could do a quick boomerang because you know um we're going pretty quick but the one thing i do want to say is we are not by any means saying that this is like a sudden correction you know there's certainly you i like that you mentioned the friction pad i like that you mentioned the reputation but what i do see is a genuine effort i've seen genuine growth in cloud which means the company is is not just accepting. Remember the Microsoft transition where they went from sort of talking about moving to cloud to under Satya, they really did it. And, and there was a little bit of a sidestep and almost a step yeah. back that had to happen. The other thing is we, I've listened to this company for years talk kind of about low code, no code and simplifying processes. And, and it, it had felt a little bit empty. Um, and now I think what we're seeing is a genuine effort and genuine advancement in the product and the technology to build a more robust, stable ecosystem to keep customers onboarded and to make that migration to cloud. So apologize for that, Pat. I know we, we don't love the boomerangs, but I just wanted to reiterate kind of that we're not sitting here saying it's perfect. We're just saying that the progress is becoming notable and visible. Yeah, Daniel. No, I listen, boomerangs aren't always bad. I mean, let's just we're really having a conversation here, but I think it's fair to, to really put where uh, uh, where we're coming from. And quite frankly, for the last decade, I hadn't had nice anything, anything nice to say about SAP. Um, but directionally, they seem to be focused on on many of the right things, particularly that, that their users are are looking for. And, you know, I got to do a lot of more research on them. I, I don't know if they're making any money um, when they're, well, any incremental money when their software is sitting in the public cloud. Uh, but that's a, that's a similar problem that, that many other companies uh, have.